Greetings, Sky Watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. We have one of the best meteor showers of the year happening this month, and you can experience it from your own backyard. Wonder what I'm talking about? Let me show you. How many of you have gone outside at night and been surprised by the appearance of a shooting star? It's not uncommon to see at least one or two in your lifetime, but if you're an avid sky watcher and you time it just right, you can see plenty of these bright objects zipping across the sky. A shooting star is not actually a star, but it does look like one as it appears to shoot across the sky. In reality, what you're seeing is what astronomers call a meteor. A meteor is caused when a piece of space debris enters our atmosphere and produces a streak of light across the sky. The streak of light is caused by the heating of the air around the object as it enters the atmosphere. Most particles that make up meteors are no larger than a pebble, and many of them are associated with comets or asteroids. If you refer back to our previous episodes about comets Atlas and Neowise, a comet is a loose collection of frozen gases, ice, rocks, and dust. As they near the sun, the ice melts, liberating all the dust particles into space. These particles are distributed throughout the comet's orbit, and occasionally our planet crosses the orbit of these comets. When we do so, we can see dozens or even hundreds of meteors in a single hour. We call this a meteor shower. Since the comet orbits are well established, the timing of a meteor shower is predictable. What isn't as predictable is how impressive the meteor shower will be. Most of the meteor showers I've experienced have been more like meteor sprinkles. There's one meteor shower, though, that ranks as being the most impressive in history. That's the Leonid meteor shower. Every November, Earth crosses the orbit of Comet Temple Tuttle. Comet Temple Tuttle visits the Sun every 33 years, and every time it visits, it dumps tons of comet dust into its orbit. We call these meteoroids. We're near the weak part of the Temple Tuttle debris field this year, but in 1833, that was a particularly amazing year. In a good year, we see around 30 to 50 meteors per hour. But in 1833, there were numerous reports from all over North America of there being in excess of 250,000 meteors during the nine hours in which the Leonids peaked. This is what we call a meteor storm, and it began the study of meteors and other falling objects. This event was so impressive that it prompted many artists to make paintings or wood carvings depicting it. For example, I remember seeing this 1889 painting by Adolf Valmy in my science book when I was a kid. A lot of people thought the world was ending because many had never seen such an amazing meteor display. Also, keep in mind that in 1833, we didn't have streetlights, so many of the faint meteors that they saw in 1833 would be invisible with today's light pollution. So, what's the best way to observe a meteor shower? Let me show you. Okay, we have our sky set up for 6 a.m. on November 17th, facing east. Leo the Lion is the radiant for this meteor shower. The radiant is defined as the region of the sky from where meteors in a shower are appearing to radiate. This effect is produced by the Earth flying through the dust and rocks left behind by Comet Temple Tuttle, and since Leo is in the direction of our travel, the meteors appear to fall away from that constellation. Because of the Earth's rotation, the best time to view the Leonids is between midnight and sunrise. The closer to sunrise you can get, the more meteors you're likely to see. So, here are a few things that you can do to enjoy the Leonids. 1. Find a dark location with a clear sky. Your backyard should be sufficient, but if you want to maximize the number you can see, find a place where you can safely view the shower away from city lights. Number 2. Take a lawn chair and a blanket with you. Having a lawn chair will allow you to lay back and view the entire sky. The blanket will keep you warm, because remember, this is November. It's going to be cold outside. Number three, scan the sky back and forth. The meteors won't all appear near Leo, but they will radiate from Leo. Some may appear in a completely different part of the sky, but by scanning back and forth, you're more likely to see at least one. 
Number four, make your wish list early. People often like to make wishes on meteors. Well, some meteors are really fast, so by the time you see them, they're gone before you can get your wish ready. So have your wishes in mind. And lastly, number five, be patient. Again, meteors tend to appear in bursts. Sometimes you see two or three within a few minutes of each other. Other times, you'll go a full 10 minutes or more without seeing anything. As my grandmother always said, patience is a virtue, and meteor showers definitely help you develop patience. All right, my friends, head outside and check out the Leonid Meteor Shower. And if you'd like to support our program, click on the Patreon link in the description, and you could qualify for Autograph the Sky Above Us memorabilia, and you could see your name in the credits of our next episode. The Leonid Meteor Shower can be an amazing sight when you remember to keep looking up. Mm -hmm.